The sun is also a star. Pages 122 to 125, Daniel. She's walking towards me. A couple of hours ago, I would have said that her face was expressionless, but I'm becoming a Natasha expert, and her face is only trying to be expressionless. If I had to guess, I would say that she's happy to see me. What happened to your interview? She asks as soon as she's close enough. No hug, no, I'm so happy to see you. Maybe I'm not such a Natasha expert after all. Do I go with the facts or the truth? Curiously, these are not always the same. The fact is, I postponed. The truth is, I postponed so I could spend more time with her. I go with the truth. I postponed so I could spend more time with you. Are you insane? This is your life we're talking about. I didn't burn the building to the ground, Tosh. I am just moved it until later. Who is Tosh? She asks. There is a smile at the corner of her lips. How did your thing go? I point my chin in the direction of the elevators. Her smile goes away. Note to self, do not bring this up again. Fine. I have to come back at 3.30. I look at my phone. 11.35 a.m. Looks like we have more time together, I say. I expect her to roll her eyes, but she doesn't. I take it as a small victory. She shivers a little and I rubs her hands down her forearms. I can see the goosebumps on her skin. And now I've learned another thing about her. She gets cold easily. I take her jacket and help her into it. She slides one arm in and then the other and then shrugs to adjust the shoulders. I help her with the collar. It's a small thing. I let my hand rest on the back of her neck and she leans into me just slightly. Her hair tickles my nose. It's a small thing, but it feels like something we've done, been doing for a long time now. She turns and I have to lift my hand so I don't touch her more intimately. Wherever we're going, we're not there yet. Are you sure you're not jeopardizing? She begins. I don't actually care. You should care. She stops talking and looks at me with relentless eyes. You did it for me? Yes. What makes you so sure I'm worth it? Instinct, I say. I don't know what it is about her that makes me fearless with the truth. Her eyes widen and she shivers slightly. You're impossible, she says. It's possible, I say. She laughs and her black eyes sparkle at me. What should we do now? She asks. I need to get my hair cut and I need to get the pouch and deposit slips to my dad. I want to do neither of these things. What I want to do is find someplace cozy and cozy up with her, but the pouch needs to be delivered. I asked her if she's up for a trip to Harlem and she agrees. Really, this is the absolute last thing I should be doing. If there are worse ideas than this, I don't know what they are. My dad is just going to freak her out. She's going to meet him and imagine that he's what I'll be like in 50 years. And then she'll go flying for the hills because that's what I would do in her place. My dad's a weird guy. I say weird, but what I mean is ex epically fucking strange. First, he doesn't really talk to anyone except customers. This includes me and Charlie. Unless berating counts as talking. If berating counts, then he said more to Charlie this past summer and fall than he said in, than he has in 19 years. I may be exaggerating, but only slightly. I don't know how I'm going to explain Natasha to him or Charlie. Well, Charlie, I don't really care about, but my dad will notice her. He'll know if something's up the same way he always knows which customer is going to shoplift or who's good for an IOU and who's not. Later tonight at dinner, he'll say something to my mom in Korean and the voice he uses to complain about Americans. I don't really want either of them involved in this yet. We're not ready for that kind of pressure. Natasha says that all families are strange, and it's true. I'll have to ask her more about her family later after we do this thing. We descend into the subway. Get ready, I say.